For part 2 of the update 8.7 refines, we'll be talking about Summer Ingrip and the remixes from Mythic's Nalt and Ashura. We'll be talking about what everyone can do now, then discuss your own playstyles with some build ideas. First up today we got Summer Ingrid. Let's just say Ingrid's been eating good. She's a flying lance unit, good speed, not the best attack, and then balance okay, defense and res. Star point lance is a 60 might weapon that grants plus 3 speed. It then does something unusual. Always active in combat, Ingrid gets plus 5 total stats and fun of follow-up effects. She also heals 10 HP after combat. For the first fight in either phase, Ingrid gets an impressive 80% DR piercing. For second fights onward, it's still a very respectable 40%. Star Point Lance used to only work one time per phase, the original effects now just work all the time and similar to her rearmed version, Ingrid gets no follow up cause she's speedy. In a bit of a contrast to her rearmed ult, instead of guard bearing's percent DR, Summer Ingrid gets DR piercing. Like guard bearing, it's strongest on the first fight in a phase, but you still get benefits for all other fights. 80% DR pierce is pretty high, don't really see that kind of number. For the refine, every turn if Ingrid is near an armor ally, or a melee infantry ally, or a melee flying ally, strap in, cause Ingrid and those allies get plus 6 attack and speed, plus 1 movement, Kanto 1, and breath type cooldown reduction. The refine could have stopped there and I would have been impressed for the most part. Continuing though, Ingrid gets sling. If she initiates or is within 2 spaces of an ally, grant plus for all stats, and deal true damage equal to 20% speed in Ingrid stable. Kind of a crazy refine, Ingrid literally hands out 3 statuses plus attack and speed field boss. The catch is similar to rain snap, this only applies to certain units. Any armor, but for infantry and flyers, they have to be melee. I like rain snap, so I think this is a fine effect and on top of extra movement, Ingrid gets Kanto 1 and breath type cooldown. It's pretty sizable buffs. For combat, she'll get plus 9 to all stats, no follow up, true damage based on speed, a sizable amount of DR piercing, and 10 HP sustain. Don't got a lot of complaints here. For builds, Summer Ingrid's options have been blown wide open, but technically she does have a team comp requirement now. You need an armor or a melee infantry or flyer, otherwise Ingrid doesn't get her incredible array of boss. Unfortunately, if you gave her rain snap, they may be wasted with this refine. You could opt for guidance warping for the allies not covered by the refine's buff. With Kanto 1, Ingrid has some ability to get into guidance position. Now, Ingrid herself will get 3 movements, so this puts her in a decent initiation role. With Slaying and Breath Type cooldown, Ingrid can possibly charge Luna in 1 action or Gale Force in 2. You could run the Dual Sharena set with Attack and Speed Excel for flat DR, and then Potent for Percent DR and the possible 3rd hit. Another strong initiation tool is Flow Guard 4. The no follow up part is redundant, but again, Scout plus Guard on a non dragon is really neat. If Ingrid avoids a special, she may not need as much defense to tank a counter. If she doubles with her high speed and no follow up, then she can hopefully finish the fight. If we're gonna go all in on player phase, Deadly Miasma inflicts minus 5 stats on the foe and gets rid of their field boss, you then get the Miasma tiles. For an alternate initiation build, you could do Flared Sparrow plus Guard Bearing, lots of DR, lay down the Flame Tiles, then retrieve to Kanto. If you're confident Ingrid can get the KO in 2 hits, you could run Desperation, Dive Bomb, or Aerial Maneuvers. For some alternate skills you can mix and mash, Clash, Catch, and Solo are all fine stat boosters. Ingrid gives 3 statuses, so Prime 4 is an actual option. If you ran Oath 4 for warping, you could proc Prime 4 immediately. We'll also get full buffs. It's not really necessary, but you could run Crux if you want. This is more to support allies from long range. For other C skills, any tier 4 smoke is fine, you could do Fatal Smoke or Pank Smoke 4. If you hate certain red units, you could run something like Red Feud. In conclusion, Summer Ingrid got an insane refine, it's like Arcane Lewin on steroids. You are tied to needing certain unit types on the team, but if you're fine with Rain Snap, then this isn't easier since you can even include flyers in your mix. I'm pretty surprised she got 80% DR piercing and then even for later fights, 40% pierce is still great. You can run no quarter, but Ingrid's definitely okay without it. There's even some room for Gale Force, although Ingrid self heals quite a bit, so not the best Wings of Mercy beacon. She can be great for Gale Force teams though, with the extra movement, Kanta 1, and quit on support. Very impressive upgrade. Up next is Mythic Note. She's a speedy lance infantry, but is mainly infamous for being a defense mythic with Pathfinder. Perhaps not a bad thing for some, but this remix and refine didn't really make Newt's Pathfinder any stronger. Only one small buff. Now, like her sister, this is mainly a combat focused upgrade. Let's start with Note's unique B skill, Moon Twin Wing Plus. If about 25% HP, inflict minus 5 attack speed and defense on the foe, deal true damage equal to 10% attack, gain half DR piercing for every hit, and Note's dodge has been updated to 50% DR max. Pretty basic stuff here, the DR piercing is the main change. 
Onto Herm Foxy, this 16 might lance, grants plus 3 speed and pathfinder. Every turn, Note gives her allies within 2 spaces the incited status. For combat, if above 25% HP, she gets plus 5 to all stats, and then bonus Delver 4's ability to borrow buffs from nearby allies. So for those not familiar, Pathfinder lets allies move through Note's space for free, extremely powerful, and commonly was paired with guys like Legendary Sigurd. The one buff to Note's Pathfinder is that allies get incited, which is just a stat boost for every space moved, up to plus 3 to all stats. Pathfinder extends allies' range, so incited makes sense, although it's just a small stat bump. For the rest of the base weapon, Note's bonus doubler is upgraded, she can borrow field buffs from teammates if needed. For the refine, if foe initiates or has more than 75% HP, inflict minus 4 to attack speed and defense with extra debuffs equal to the highest debuff on each stat between the foes and nearby foes. Notes also gets 7 flat DR for first attacks with an S, and she has bread type cooldown. So, on top of bonus doubler, Note gets Sabotage, aka she doubles up on debuffs the enemy has active. To go with her dodge B skill, Note adds 7 flat DR, and then bread type cooldown is nice since she doesn't have slain. Overall, this refine is slightly disjointed. Note has bonus doubler, but no innate self buffing. She has sabotage, but no innate debuffing. To take advantage of Note's stat stacking, you will probably need outside sources for buffs and debuffs. Now, I'm not sure if it's actually intended by the devs, but Note does have a way to buff and debuff. She comes with attack and speed menace. If foes are within 4 spaces, Note gets plus 6 attack and speed and debuffs the closest foe with minus 6 attack and speed. Technically, this does work for the refine. However, Really not sure it's good enough. We literally just got a new shiny emblem ring that lets anyone initiate from outside four spaces, so will Menace even activate? Personally, for something like Aether Raids, I think you're just better off depending on other buffs and debuffs from allies. Now, for her free remake skill, Note got Distant Dart, just an upgrade over her innate Distant Counter with plus 5 speed. This is fine, but currently everyone and their mom is running Distant Bonus Doubler. It's also back right now, and Note literally has a stat-focused Bonus Doubler weapon. Kinda self-explanatory. For General Comet, her new skills give 50% dodge with 7 flat DR, 50% DR pierce, and cooldown. I'm not saying you should, but if you think about it, the Goose Friend could replace Moon Twin Wing, especially if you think regular percent DR just ain't it anymore. Now, for other skills, Note could run Attack and Speed Oath and get Warping, which could maybe open up a new Pathfinder attack option. Another way to get Warping is Imagery No Follow. Maybe help out allies, but Note herself wants no follow-up. You got Odd Speed Wave as another no follow-up source, and then no follow-up Sacred Seal is available as usual. If you wanted to stack flat DR, maybe with Lagoo's friend, then Excel A skills are a new option. For certain specials, you may want Times Pulse or Pulse Up. I've listed Vital Astra here, but unless you got Emblem Mark, this is really just for the damage portion. Godlike Reflexes also would be fun, but again, probably without Mart, it's really tough. If you're okay giving up Comet skills, you could run Odd or even Tempest in the C slot and Sacred Seal. Like Warping, this is just another way to get Note into Pathfinder positions. Overall, Mythic Note got a decent refiner remix, but like a lot of comet focused refines, is it enough for Aether Raids? No extra blessing stats puts notes at a disadvantage, so that's where bonus doubler and sabotage could come into play. You can stack bonus doubler effects, and then sabotage status will stack with the refine, as well as fall penalty doubler. Things can get pretty nasty if the enemy doesn't neutralize those. In terms of support though, unlike Dogger, Note does not share Pathfinder with more allies. Incited is nice, but a second Pathfinder source is hilariously powerful. Basically, Pathfinder-wise, nothing's really changed here. It's still powerful though, and still needs to be respected. Our last upgraded unit for this month is Mythic Ashura. She's a colors infantry mage with good speed and res and an Astro Mythic. Ashura's unique C skill, Orders Restraint Plus, has gotten some more team buffs. Every turn, grant plus 6 attack and res field buffs, the no panic status, the no fall up status, and the hexblade status to allies within 3 spaces for 1 turn. For Ashura herself, if there are 3 or more allies within 3 spaces every turn, she gets plus 6 attack and res, no panic, no fall up, and instead of hexblade, Ashura gets 50% DR piercing as a status. In combat, Ashura gets a bonus plus for stats if an ally is within 3 spaces. So, Order's Restraint now has a 3 space buffing range, no fall up and hexblade are added to its original effects. If you have some faster units, not a bad add on, and hexblade is useful against lopsided defensive stats. Ashura herself will still target res only, but half DR piercing is pretty solid, especially because she's getting a lot of firepower from her weapon. Order's Sentence grants plus 3 attack. If above 25% HP or Ashura has an active bonus, she gets plus 5 total stats and bonus attack equal to the highest total field buffs among Ashura and allies within 3 spaces, times 
Ashura will also get 30% DR for first attacks with an S. So Ashura used to have a sort of Blade Tome effect where she buffed allies and then she borrowed those buffs to give her bonus attack. With the new base effect, this is actually now a real Blade Tome, so Ashura can use her own field buffs and the attack bonus is 50% more. For example, if Ashura or an ally has full plus 6 field buffs, that would be plus 24 total, you times that by 1.5, so plus 36 attack. That is a, a little scary. For the refine, if Ashura initiates or faces a ranged foe, she gets plus 4 stats and flat DR equal to half the value of the highest total field buffs among herself and allies within 3 spaces. She will also get guard and heal 7 HP after combat. Main thing to understand is that they don't want Ashura running close counter, the 15 base defense doesn't exactly help that argument in the first place either. However, with this refine, Ashura can get 30% DR and flat DR also scaling with her total field buffs. In our full buffing example, half of 24 is 12 flat DR. Not too bad. Ashura won't be the craziest res tank, but she's got extra protection now and better damage thanks to even more bonus attack and half DR pierce. Kinda wish she also got Hexblade for those high res mage versus mage fights, but you know, well. For her new free remix skill, Ashura upgrades to low speed and res 4. Not bad, but not a big game changer. You could run that with her default attack and res ideal for. Ashura has decent speed and some defensive perks to take a hit, but again, any, uh, against anything physical, I'm not exactly going to feel confident with 15 base defense. Since the remix gave no fall up, you could opt for Desperation or Wind Slash Water Sweep setups. Ashura can pair this with Flash Sparrow or Flashing Blade to help a, uh, get a special on the second hit. Both attacks get half DR piercing, and you want to give Ashura or an ally as much field buffs as possible. It's a bit tough to get a speed and defense self buff without that C slot, but if you can get that via an ally, then Ashura can get over 30 plus bonus attack to smite people with. Desperation 4 is incredibly hard to get, but it's finally coming back on a second unit and that's Summer Petra with the latest Summer Banner. Choosing one of the sweep skills though is much cheaper. Now the issue with Fallen Offense is that you sacrifice enemy phase. With certain Aether Raid setups having immediate danger, you may want mixed phase skills. LC District could offer more percent DR and Crystalline Water could maybe neutralize attack and res debuffs. If you have a full buffing setup, Ashura could run Bonus Doubler. You could do Close Counter, but I'll leave that up to you. Since Ashura has some speed, if you can stack more, maybe Speed Preempt could be cheesy. Blade Tone with half DR Pierce plus Vantage, that's pretty nasty. Hardy Bearing could also be used to prevent enemy cheesy skills. A new B skill for Ashura is Resonance, now from Emblem Celica. If you can hit at least 40 HP, that's still good for 40% DR Pierce and 80 true or 8 true damage. With her remix, that's going to give 70% total DR piercing. You could do a similar thing with Tempo 4. Now she's not going to be like Govig or anything, but Ashuri doesn't need to be healthy to proc her skills, so Resonance maybe could be something to try out. If you did want to try to tank it out and you don't care about regular percent DR, Lagu's Friend is an option. 3 cooldown Flare would work, maybe get Emblem Ike if you can find minus 1 cooldown from a friend. In conclusion, Mythic Ashura improved her support and having a 3 space buffing range is definitely nice, especially with how dangerous something like Aether Raids can be. No Fall Up and Hexblade may not benefit everyone, but you could also run other support skills like maybe Sabotage with high res stacking or Rally plus Ruse. If you need Colors Magical Burst Damage, a 1.5 times stronger Blade Tone with half DR piercing will do the job. Something to watch out for in the future could be our bookgate friend Ichthyrnir. If you didn't pay attention to his weapon, he gives plus 3 to all field buffs for allies around him. That literally just translates directly into more damage for Ashura. I don't know if he's going to be an astromythic, but just in any general sense, potentially a fun teammate for the Goddess of Order. That'll be it for part 2 of the update 8.7 refines. Let me know your thoughts on these new upgrades. I am very impressed with Summer Angry's one. If you missed it, in part 1 we talked about Gale, Mustafa, Mel Chris, and Shinon. Check that out if you haven't. Up next we're going to be talking about Faye's second Summer Banner. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.